been burrowing in that log. I've been meaning to do a 10,000 kilometer review for a while, so I'm up to 13,665 or something, so nearly 14,000. So I thought I'd just go through, we've stopped in the bush here in Wingello State Forest, just exploring. And so I thought I'd just go through from front to back, top to bottom, and just so you can see things I've added, things I wouldn't do again or whatever, that sort of thing. All right, so we'll start with the front, okay. Um, I haven't done anything to the front wheel, just had it off a few times. That front wheel, that front tyre has got 13,000 Ks on it. So it's still got a bit on there. So that's all right. So 13,000 Ks on that. Um, and then come and have a look here. Okay, there's my, uh, there's a little angle bracket in there. Can you get that? Yeah, probably come around the other side. All right, you can see my tyre pressure sensor. All right, so I've got a uh, four tyre, so I can monitor each particular wheel. And if you get down lower, you can see this little angle bracket, that little thing. Can you see that? All right, that little angle bracket, that stops the screen from going to left to right. Um, or right to left, vibrating. So that uh, thing there. So thanks to Lee from the Ural Australia Forum. Yeah, he said, just put a little bracket onto the plastic cowling, and that will stop the vibration. All right, come in and have a look at this. I've got the um, USB port on the handlebar. And it's got uh, voltage and temperature on there. So that's just handy if I wanted to charge up the camera on the helmet. I've got some Oxford heated over grips. So that can, um, I can swap the grips between the Tenere and the Ural. Um, Zumo 590, need to update my GPS. I need one with about five times that screen so I can actually read it in my old age. Okay. Yep. All right. And then let's go over this. So that's, that's all the cowling and the so on I've done at the front. I put on these Storm Bark Busters. So um, they fit just fit on the handlebar. Coming in here have a look again. Here I put these bar risers, which sets the bars up a little bit. And back a bit so you're not leaning forward all the time just makes it a little bit more comfortable so those bar risers and i put a better switch on for the spotlights in the middle there and that's about it over there's the remote control for the um, camera the center camera so that's the remote control for it saves the button on the camera getting worn out and so on all right so that's that side let's go and have a look at the front here the spotlights they're the standard spotlights I've got the uh, the gremlin bell there, so I haven't seen any gremlins. So thanks to Ural Junkie for putting me onto this uh, warding bell to get rid of the gremlins. I haven't seen any gremlins on the side of the road. The front rack, it's off a of Harley. If you look it up on eBay, you look at a Harley rear rack and it fits on there nicely, um, nice and cheap. And it's uh, pretty sturdy, haven't had any trouble with that. So that's off a of Harley. Uh, the screens are, are standard from Ural, so I got those put on when I got the bike. Um, what else? Um, well, let's go around this side. Uh, that's up the side rack, and I'm always bashing through trees and so on, so I put these extra blinker guards on there. So they're from Ural. Um, that's about it there. Um, I've got an extra USB and so on in there for the that. You can you see that? All right, so that's just extra USB ports and charging and so on in there. So that's for charge phones with the sidecar monkey. That's um, me. That's you, yeah. Uh, everything else is there on the back here. I've got the, uh, the Ural uh, rear bumper and the uh, first aid kit. It's just got some headache tablets in there and some um, wet weather pants and a tiny little Band-aids? Tiny little uh, first aid kit, that's all. Yep. Um, and that's that. Uh, the two into one exhaust. There's no way the standard exhaust would have lasted where we've been and so on. 
um, and that's the only mod there. Well, underneath here is the, the bash plate. So we fitted that. So that's, there's lots of bumps and scratches on that underneath. So that's pretty handy. Um, what else have I done over here? Nothing really. The only other thing is um, the final drive, which is this part, right? This the final drive, it takes uh, 90 mil. If you put anything over 90 mil in it, it comes out the um, the tube here. And so what I've done is, because that spurts a bit, I've just got a little plastic bag on the end of it. So if it does spurt any extra oil, it goes into that bag and not all over the back wheel and so on. So that's that. Um, so that's about it. That's all the things that I've done. Um, and I can't think of anything else at the moment. So that's it, viewers. That's the all the accessories, things that have gone wrong. So the, the reviews. The only things that have gone wrong is um, the shock on the sidecar was leaking. But I've got uh, one of the guys on the Ural Australia forum sent me one of his old ones. So that's his old one on there. And Ural replaced it uh, with a new one under warranty. So I've got a spare one now, thanks to uh, Richard on the Ural Australia forum. But other than that, that's the only problem I've had. I did try um, different gaskets on the heads, but that's uh, I've gone back to cork gaskets. All right, so any questions, let me know in the comments below. That's a quick overview. If I think of anything else, I'll add it in. All right, bye for now. Okay, so we're going to do our 10,000 kilometre review, which is yep. actually 13,000 as we get out of this forest now. Yeah, we're rounding down. So... That's all that uh, you saw there, all the accessories and so on, and bits and tweaks and things you can do. And people ask me also about the servicing. Well, I've done all the servicing myself. Um, you can change the oil and change the filter and change the, check the valve clearances and everything and so on. If you just follow the instructions in the manual, well, there's a good view out there. Oh, a bit of sand here. Yeah, yeah, so if you follow all the instructions, that's Morton National Park out there. Um, yeah, so if you follow all the instructions in the manual, you can change the oil yourself and uh, do pretty much everything. Only a major fault I wouldn't be able to fix maybe, but... So that's pretty much it, viewers. Short and sweet video, 10,000 kilometre review. I haven't had any dramas except that shock, and that was easy fixed. And... Um, that's about it. What do people say, ask me also is, what's, you know, can you cruise on the motorway? Well, I cruise on the motorway at, at about 80, so I stay off the motorways. The only time you hear about people having trouble with the Ural is, oh, I was doing a motorway run and, you know, two hours doing 100 kilometres an hour, then they have trouble. So as long as you don't push it, it's quite, uh, quite reliable. So as long as you're not in a hurry to get anywhere, then... Um, Pretty reliable, so don't push it. You only push it when you got to get up a hill or something. But um, oh yeah, it's a good view up here. There we go. That's because they've just logged this area. All right. Well, we'll leave you there, viewers. That's a quick 10,000 kilometre review. Um, any questions? Any questions? Side? What do you reckon, Sidecar Monkey? Would you give it a Hey, oh. Go and go and get yourself a Ural. Yeah, go and get yourself a Ural. It's good fun. Yeah, look where we are. It's um, a nice way to become a part of nature and appreciate our beautiful country. Yeah. The worst part is the helmet hair from wearing a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as we get out of the forest, well, let's go. We'll go and search over there. Okay. That's what you do in a Ural. We'll go over there, I think. All right, catch you later.